is it tough for you as a Brazilian to be with Cheo all the time? And, you know, I'm sure a lot of Brazilians say, Vinny, I mean, what are you doing, Cheo, really? Uh, recently, I saw after the show, like, a lot of people with Sandra, like, you know, they were, they, they're, like, they don't see Cheo as a, as a bad guy anymore since they don't they fight it. Because I think, like, yeah. in reality, you know, I don't think Cheo likes to break the character too much. But uh, in reality, like, that's a character, you know. Chair in person, like, he's more of, like, what he saw in the Ultimate Fighter than what he seemed like when he's pre-fight interviews. It's way more than that. Like, you know, she's, like, he's more of that person than, uh, more of the good guy than the bad guy that people, like, think he is. But uh, when I first started to work with Chael, that was for uh, his second fight against Anderson. I would have people, like, saying, like, hate messages on Facebook, uh, on Twitter. <laughs> Even people, like, found my email or saying, like, all kind of, like, stuff to me. Wow. So, you know, it was kind of, like... It was bad, but it was expected, you know. Especially because we, when I decided to work with Chael, I was already reading, like, what people were saying about him. So, like, you always expect it. But I, I thought it was just, like, too much. Because that's a job, you know. It's not like I'm not going against my country. I, I'm not friends with Anderson. Like, I never trained, like, with his team. So, like, it doesn't make any sense for people to be, like, hating on me for working for somebody. But when he says, uh, you know, talking about, it, it doesn't make any sense how you could be beaten on a guy for four and a half rounds and then a guy wraps his legs around your head and he's declared the winner. Do you ever go to jail and say, come on, come on, man, really? Really? Uh, that, like I said, that's the character. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny, though. Like, but he's talking about jiu-jitsu. Like, same thing, yeah. Same thing. He was like, I think he was not long ago saying the same thing about jiu-jitsu. But then if you ask him, like, the, the guy that he respects the most is probably like Damien Maia. That's the guy. He, every time he talks about Damien, yeah, man, Damien was like, you know, Technically, it was the guy who really dominated him. And, like, he says all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, he really respects Damon. And, uh, you know, he brought me to, to work with him. Like, so he has all the all respect for jiu-jitsu. But knowing the Brazilians are really protective, too, like, you know, to the art, I think it was a good idea in his mind to, like, you know, touch the subject. Oh, jiu-jitsu sucks. Yeah. You know, so I know the Brazilians are going to hit me even more if I say that. What did you but, think? Uh, yeah, go ahead. But, you know, he has nothing against jiu-jitsu. He trains jiu-jitsu a lot. Like, you know, at this time, we didn't get to work too much together just because, like, you know, I decided to do my camp here in Vegas and he stayed in Oregon, so he didn't get to work too much. But, uh, you know, I, whenever he has another fight, I'm probably going to go work with him because he pretty much decided me to be, like, his jiu-jitsu guy. And what are your thoughts on his fight with Jones uh, on the same card as you next week? Uh, it's a tough fight, you know, like, uh, to be honest, like, Jones is the favorite, but I don't think, like, he's going to come out as the winner, even though he's the favorite. Just like my fight, like, Phil's the favorite, like, you know, numbers, like, all his favorite. He fought the toughest guys as far as names. He fought, like, you know, more times in the UFC, has a better record in the UFC. So he's the favorite, but that doesn't mean he's going to win. Like, you know, I'm, you've seen, like, the recent cards, like, so many guys are favorites, like, Uriah, Uriah Hall. That's right. He was a favorite, like, so many, so many people's mind, like, there's no chance for Calvin to win. And I was one of the guys that, that was telling people, no, Calvin's going to win, like, style-wise. Calvin's like, you know, it's a horrible fight for for you, right? But not many people were seeing that way. People were, like, totally bought the hype. So, anyway, anyways, going back to Jones and, and Son, I think Jay, I think Chael can win. I think Chael's going to have a good chance, like, to take him down and hold him now. Go, go for a finish. He has the capability, like, but, you know, you can have, a, like, at that level, like, that Jones is, it's hard for you to be picking a finish against him. But I think uh, Chael has all the skills to be able to take him down at will and hold him down. And not getting submitted, because, like, I think I think Johns is good. He's overall, like, good. Like, grappling is good. Like, strike, of course, like, it's great. Great wrestling. But I don't think he's, like, you know, that technical, like, to have to be able to finish Chael, like, off his back. I think, like, once Chael put him on his back, he's going to be trying to get up. And I think Chael's going to be able to keep him straight and down and take him down and hold him down. So I, I think Chael t- gets a decision. And if Chael, say he doesn't win, you want to fight John Jones? Me? Yeah, who doesn't win? Like, if Chael doesn't win? Yeah. Anyway, it's one step at a time. Like, at first I'm fighting number eight, you know, and then I have to go number mm-hmm. seven, number six. I'm going one step at a time. Like, I just that's the only fight that I wanted as a, out of the top ten. So you're just like Phil Davis, and that's all I'm thinking right now. You know, after that, let's see what I, what I do. Now, but, uh, Jones, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I don't like I don't want that fight. I just don't want to be like, you know, rushing when I'm just fighting for the first time somebody in the top 10. It could happen down the line. I mean, Vitor Belfort almost uh, caught him in the armbar in that first round. If that was Vinny Magalhaes on his back, that armbar yeah, would that have been finished. Yeah, that would be a different story for sure. But yeah. here's the thing, like, people try to, it's almost like everybody says that, like, people take, actually, Vitor came up to me and said, like, you know, if you had done that move you did, like, I'll probably have to finish them. Vitor said that, exactly the same move that he did in the same night. 
we fought the same night. So it's like that's what Vitor said. If they had done that move you did, which was the the the, the flipping arm bar, he said, "Oh, it has to be him." Why? I was like, "I don't know why I didn't do it." <laughs> but uh, I don't know, man. Like people like, sometimes take credit away from that fight, like from Vitor. But uh, it's not. Vitor is great. Like Vitor's great on the ground. Like he may not, he may not be like at, at the highest level, but he knows what he's doing. So it's it's hard for me to be taking credit away from Jones too. You know, he wasn't a great defense, but he had heart not to tap. Yeah, so. definitely, and he paid the price, right? I mean, his arm was hurt for a while afterwards, so sure. a lot of heart to not tap. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people would have tapped, no doubt. Um, speaking of tapping to arm bars, I saw Uriah Hall on a video rolling with Ronda Rousey. Did you roll with Ronda Rousey as well? And is there video of that somewhere? Oh no, no, like the, just the guys that the, the you know the competitors on the show they got to train with her a little bit. Some of the guys, other guys that didn't want to be trained with girls. You know how some guys are, you know, like even myself would be honest, like, I don't like training with the girls too much. <laughs> you know, nothing against the girls like training, like when they train like on their own, like, or, you know, when they fight and all this stuff. But me, like myself, I just don't like to. So that's why I didn't, you know. Well, so who have, great, who, like, yeah, she is great, obviously, right? But I mean, you know, teach her own and you're, you're a light heavyweight, right? And she's a bantamweight. So there's, yeah, there's a big weight just, difference. Yeah, like, what, that, not, but that 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 at that time was even worse. At that time it was two forty five and she was probably like, you know, hundred and forty pounds. So it's like a, I was like a one hundred and five pounds like heavier than her. So it's a little different. Two forty five. What are you at I right now? Two forty five when you're on the show. Uh I'll wait today two twenty seven. Okay. So you're on which, track. Which, yeah, which is good. Like the last for the last fight, I was two thirty two on the Monday before the fight. Like likely this Monday I'm gonna be like way into twenty five to twenty two or so. My weight's perfect now. I saw Mike Dolce on Team Sonnen. Is he helping you with the diet? Uh, not really. I have my strength conditioning coach who is also like a dietitian, like taking care of my stuff. So it's pretty much everybody goes pretty much through the same same thing. So. And uh, who Mike else? Dolce's too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Dolce's too expensive. Well, maybe after, yeah, you know, yeah. submission of the night, uh, win bonus, and, uh, you know, you'll be uh, calling Mike Dolce. No, nah, no, nah, it's, it's just because I don't have any issue making weight, really, you know. It's more, dude, like, it, Dolce is like, you know, he's a friend of mine, but he's really like a base here for the for the fighters. You know, it's more for guys that are not, like, really, like, they don't have discipline, so they have to have, like, Dolce, like, babies in them, like, you know, make right. their, like, lunch, dinner, and all this stuff. With me, it's easy. Like, once I'm in a training camp, like, I don't drink soda, like, I don't drink, like, you know, I know how to eat, how to eat healthy. And with the help of my strength conditioning coach, like it makes things like way easier. So I, I don't have an issue making weight. I don't suffer like cutting weight either. So it's almost like I feel like I don't need much of a help of a professional for that area. And uh, who who else are you training with? Uh, I know Roy, Roy Nelson is around. You're training at the Syndicate MMA out in Vegas. Is that where you're basing most of your camp for this fight? Uh, yes, and I uh, drive the OGG to two. Like you know, there's no better like grappling training town for me than than, than Robert. And that's what I was training with him for his fight. Now he's he's traveling to, but uh, I didn't train with him just this week. But uh, pretty much the whole camp was uh, striking days at CDK and uh, grappling at Drysdale's. Well, but, uh, yeah. He's been great. There's, like, so many guys. All the guys that are at Extreme Couture, they all moved to, to CDK. So, like, sometimes I have, like, 30 or 40 pros in, in, in practice. So it's just great. Well, it sounds like you got a real good training camp going out there, Vinny. It's going to be a great fight. I can't wait to see it. You and Phil Davis coming up in eight days' time on pay-per-view live in New Jersey, UFC 159. Uh, Vinny, you know, uh, love watching you fight and uh, really enjoy speaking with you. Hopefully we'll do it again real soon. Oh, definitely. Let's do after the fight after I beat Phil. All right, there you go. That's a promise, Vinny. We'll definitely talk to you. Vinny Magalesh. Vinny, thank you for taking the time. Good luck in eight days. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me show again. There he is, Vinny Magalesh.